Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in antenna and wave propagation series. As a matter of fact, this is the first in series of wave propagation and we'll start with the basics of ionospheric propagation. In this video, we'll talk about the structure of ionosphere, which is very, very important to know before we can proceed on to um, make the waves propagate in ionosphere. So let us begin. I've written down a few key points here. Uh, the first key point is the ionization. It is the process of upsetting the electrical neutrality of the atom. Uh, what happens is uh, there are some free uh, atoms in the atmosphere which are uh, bombarded by the rays of the sun or the alpha or the beta rays and some electrons they leave outer shells of the atom thereby making the uh, atom an ion and some free electrons also roam in the atmosphere now that process is known as ionization higher ranges of atmosphere because the rays of the suns are predominant there and the exact opposite of that phenomena is known as recombination so these are the two key points before we get to the structure of the ionosphere. Uh, the upper part of the atmosphere where the ionization is appreciable. So this is the key point here. This is that part of the atmosphere where ionization is happening all the time. Uh, the amount of ionization may differ, but throughout the ionosphere, ionization uh, needs to happen. Now there are two key points here, one is agents and the other one is height. When we define the structure of ionosphere, we first define what are the agents that cause the ions to form. Like UV radiations, alpha, beta rays, cosmic rays and meteors, they are the cause of uh, upsetting the electrical neutrality of the atom, causing positive ions to be made and electrons to be produced and then we have height of the ionosphere that ranges from 50 kilometers to 400 kilometers we have um, you know troposphere and then stratosphere uh, up to a level of 50 to 90 kilometers and after that uh, this this layer ionosphere comes into play you can see that ionosphere extends to 400 kilometers above the surface of the earth so that is humongous this is how the ionosphere looks like it starts from this range of 50 kilometers above the earth and extends up to 400 kilometers now within the ionosphere we have various other layers so you can say the ionosphere is further subdivided into various layers the first one being the d layer then we have the e layer which is um, again you know sometimes divided into normal e and sporadic e and then we have the f layer which is divided into f1 and f2 layer over this side of the diagram you will find that the ionization density is maximum in the f2 layer as i mentioned earlier the ionization is predominant at a very very high altitudes because of the power of the sun's rays are higher at the higher altitudes and as we move downwards the ionization becomes but still we have ionization on all four layers of the ionosphere so that being said another important point is that the composition of the ionosphere changes with respect to time for example during the day time we can see that d layer is present then e layer is also present f1 and f2 layers are uh, present in both the day and night but d layer vanishes in during the night because of the absence of um, all those ultraviolet radiations that are needed for ionization or although E layer is present and F layer is present E becomes uh, can lay heavy side layers during the night 
All right, I've made a separate table for all the layers along with the key points that you must know about these layers. So let's discuss those key points. The height of the D region extends from 50 to 90 kilometers and is present only during the day. The electron density is pretty low. It is 10 raised to power 3 to 10 raised to power 4 electrons per cubic meter and the cutoff frequency is 100 kilohertz. I'll talk about the cutoff frequency when we discuss propagation in ionosphere. Now, if you look closely, I've divided E region into two parts, normal E region and sporadic E region. Sporadic E region is not present everywhere and during all the times. It is, it, it is like clouds. Uh, sometimes we have clouds, sometimes we don't. But sporadic E regions are very, very important because their electron density is almost 10 times that of the normal E regions. And they are present mostly during the day and the height is almost the same. Uh, these sporadic regions will um, be found within the normal region and uh, their cutoff frequency is 3 megahertz to 5 megahertz. And finally, we have the F1, F2, the topmost layers. And during the night time, it is reduced to just one F layer. And this layer is also known as the Appleton region. And it extends from 140 to 400 kilometers. And the average height is 270 kilometers. So these are all numbers that you need to crunch. Uh, sometimes it is very important to have these numbers in hand for the examination point of view. The electron density is higher than that of the E region. As you can see, it is 3 into 10 raised to 5 to 2 into 10 raised to 6. And the cutoff frequency is 5 megahertz to 7 megahertz. So that is how uh, you can remember the various properties of the layers of the ionosphere. This diagram is super important. If you write down the values of the uh, ionization here only then this should suffice with all the uh, with all the things that you need to know about the layers and that's about it for today's tutorial that's what I wanted to discuss about the introduction of the structure of the ionosphere um, if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel I'll see you around in the next video till then stay healthy and stay happy bye bye